O oh God, you are my God. I earnestly search for you, and my soul thirsts for you. My whole body longs for you in this parched and weary land where there is no water. I will praise you as long as I live, lifting up my hands to you in prayer. Psalm 63 is the psalm of David whilst he is in the wilderness, and in that wilderness experience, he sees God as the Almighty, the saving grace of God. He sees him as that being. A very good morning to you, friends. We greet you all in the name of Jesus this day. And you may or may not be aware that we are in the season of Lent. Adrian introduced us to the season of Lent last week. And this Sunday we're going to be exploring Lent as an act of significant worship. We're going to be exploring Jesus' words in Matthew's Gospel. His challenge to us in seeing this period of Lent and fasting as a time and a thing of significant worship. Psalm 63 reminds us that it is all about worship to God. It is all about praising Jesus within our circumstances. And today is about exploring how this Lent season can be just that, an act of significant worship. We thank you very much for joining us this morning. As we say week after week, it is a blessing to have you. It really, really is. We praise and thank God for you. Before we explore the contents of our meeting this morning, and before we begin our worship, let's just share in a word of prayer together. Father God, we just want to thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. And Lord, we thank you for your love. I just pray, Lord, that you'll be with each and every one of us this day. That we may know the significance of this season. The season of Lent. The coming and going of your death and resurrection, Lord God. This season of contemplation, Lord, we just pray that throughout this day and throughout this season, you will be with us. Whatever the prayers of our hearts and minds, Lord, we lift them up to you, and may we give you the glory here this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're going to be beginning in the song, Hosanna, Praise is rising. Because friends, what better thing to do in terms of acknowledging our worship than to praise him through song? So I encourage you to turn the volume up on your devices this morning and sing to your heart's content, whether that be audible or through your hearts. This is our time to worship God. And straight after our first song, we will then be transitioning into a second song immediately. Beautiful Saviour. But without further ado, friends, let us worship God together.
procedure of the four program submission as well as the release department. And I have also a minimum role as the national contact person for modern swelling and human trafficking. So that is uh, another challenging role. Mm -hmm. 2020 has been a big year for, for our world. What's it been like on your side of the planet in the Philippines? Yes, um, the COVID-19 pandemic, pandemic really brings um, dramatic change in the way we used to it. Uh, like for example, in the port, especially here in Mindanao, because not all of our home rates have internet connection. And we only use uh, messenger, you know, just for text, so we don't have face-to-face -face pursuit, especially for um, new activities because agents below are not allowed to go out to their home. Okay. People under the age of 18 are not allowed out of their homes. Is that what you said? Yeah, below 18, they should stay at home from March until now. That is one of the government restrictions. So we we have also what we call now handy lockdown. So nobody is allowed to go out every Sunday. So we need to say we don't have worship on Sunday, but we rely on online house worship. But in December, so far now, the place to face that um, 50% of the population can attend. Well, that's good that things might be easing. What's the impact of the coronavirus pandemic been on um, modern slavery and, and, and human trafficking? Yeah, our Department of Justice have reported almost threefold cases, especially on online sexual exploitation um, of children. So our cases really um, have a dramatic rise up. So we are uh, right now there is um, there is an ongoing online awareness campaign about online sexual exploitation so that we can finally our children. You know, for most of their time are on the internet. Yeah. So it's great to see the Philippines really spearheading the army's uh, response to this in, in your in your part of the world. What what does resilience mean to you um, in these days? Yeah, we Filipinos are really resilient people. <laughs> Just recently, we have the cycle viruses that damages a lot of um, regions, especially in Latin America. Region where there are a lot of floods, and really it is so hard. But then we have this smiling spirit that we can still smile amidst of storms, amidst of many struggles that is happening to us. That's really encouraging uh, to us. What would you say are the things that you're learning about yourself and life because of the coronavirus pandemic? You learn a lot. When I was in my core, in this little core, I have a lot of vegetables garden in the back. So every Monday, I, I, I go around with my comrades and we bring some vegetables. And our neighbors who are also struggling for their daily needs, so they will also knock to my door and say, oh, uh, make sure that I have this. <laughs> can I ask for your papaya, your other vegetables? Because we need to survive. And this is really, I am thankful for that um, opportunity you know, to extend help and also to um, to show practical love to many people because we are all challenged. <laughs> but still, we cannot stop helping others. Yeah. So, we're just really grateful that um, we could have this time together, all the way from London to the Philippines. Yeah, and God bless you, and God bless the Philippines territory. Yeah, thank you so much. This is an opportunity, and I'm so happy to be part of what you all have been God bless you, Captain Jeff. Thank you. Okay, bye. Bye. In next week's film, I'll be making the call to Pakistan and talking to Fazia Columbus. Self-denial appeal, as you can 
widely seen is for territories who are overseas. And it's absolutely a reminder that we are all in this together. And as I said, next week will be the culmination of our self-denial appeal, virtually of course. But do stay in touch on our Facebook page for more details regarding how we can support us and support the wider Salvation Army in doing what we do. Just a short disclaimer, if you may have heard any thundering or any crackering of things or seen any hands on the camera, then do accept our apologies. Our microphone had malfunctioned and actually fallen off during the meeting itself. So I must commend Adrian for fixing that so covertly, but do accept our apologies if you heard as such. We're now going to be entering the time of prayer for ministry now, and you can see next to me that we have the cross. And a large part of our emphasis on Lent today is about treating it as an act of worship, and we do in worship Jesus, who did die on that cross for the atonement of our sins, and it's something that we are eternally grateful for. But just to help us prayerfully consider the meaning of our everyday lives, we're going to incorporate the cross. And there are going to be a few things that we wish for you to focus on. So, the whole concept of pinning it to the cross is enabling what struggles us, what is on our hearts, what is on our minds, and giving it to Jesus. Putting it on that cross because of him and his sacrifice is able to atone for what ails us. And what a blessing that is. So, I want you all just to prayerfully consider the following things. Fear. What is it in your heart and minds that you are fearful for? What causes you concern? What causes you anxiety? Hold on to those as we pin these things to the cross. Our obstructions. What is getting in the way of us being able to see God effectively? What is able for us or disabling us to be able to be with Him during this Lent season? Pray for the obstructions and give them to Jesus on the cross. Pray for Thanksgiving. Pray for how God is moving in our lives and how during this Lent season He is revealing Himself to you in meaningful ways. A few examples. We give thanks to God for Gwen's recent recovery and now she is home safe. We thank God for our other sister of our church who is improving and doing well. There are moments amidst these times that we can give thanksgiving to God. And we wish to give those thanks to Jesus. Requests. What are you petitioning God for at this time? Things that are on your hearts, things that are on your minds. Prayerfully consider it and give it to Jesus on the cross. And finally, his unfailing love. It is our prayer that during this Lent season, this season of fasting, this season of prayerfully approaching the Lord, in the build-up to Easter. May you just pray and acknowledge and sense the unfailing love of Christ. For it is his death on the cross that is the biggest act of love for us. Pray and remember his unfailing love. As the piano plays for Adrian, I just 
urge you to consider these things that we are praying for. And may you just spend this time in prayer with God, giving it to Jesus on the cross. we just want to petition you with the prayers of our hearts just now. We thank you for your everlasting spirit, your everlasting love, and for your self sacrifice on the cross for us. Father God, we just pray for the fears, for the obstructions, the requests, prayers of thanksgiving and for your unfailing love. We pray for each of these things, Lord God, and it is through your son's sacrifice on the cross that we are able to have this meaningful relationship, the gift of your salvation. May you just be with all my brothers and sisters in Christ and may you hear the prayers of their hearts. In Jesus' name, we pray all these things. Your name, Lord, that is above every name. Amen. Amen. Or just let those words just continue to be on the screen until Adrian is able to return. And we want to thank Adrian for being able to facilitate such wonderful worship for us. We're now going to be having our Bible reading this morning. And the Bible reading is taken from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 6, verses 16 to 24. And I'll be reading from the New Living Translation. And the word says, And when you fast, don't make it obvious, as the hypocrites do. For they try to look miserable and disheveled at people who admire them for their fasting. I tell you the truth, that is only the reward they will ever get. But when you fast, comb your hair and wash your face, then no one will notice that you are fasting except your Father, who knows what you do in private. And your Father, who sees everything, will reward you. Don't store up treasures here on earth, when moths eat them and rust destroys them and where thieves break in and steal? Store your treasures in heaven, 
where moths and rust cannot destroy, and thieves do not break in and steal. Whatever your, wherever your treasure is, there the desires of your heart will also be. Your eye is like a lamp that provides light for your body. When your eye is healthy, your whole body is filled with light. But when your eye is unhealthy, your whole body is filled with darkness. And if the light you think you have is actually darkness, how deep that darkness is. No one can serve two masters, for you will hate one and love the other. You will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and be enslaved to money. And may God add a blessing to his word this morning. Amen. And before we explore God's word together briefly, we're going to be worshipping in another song together. Hear the call of the kingdom. Self-denial. 
all in the build-up to Easter. And as you know the significance of Easter, the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus. And last week, Adrian helpfully helped us to understand the significance of not being tempted to stay as we are this season of Lent. And we're going to be carrying on that emphasis in how we see Lent. And this Lent is an act of significant worship. That is how it is intended to be. Let me ask you all a question. If you're all in this building right now, I'm going to be asking you this question. What are you giving up for Lent? What are you taking up for Lent? What are you fasting right now? What are the modern day's examples of Lent? There are examples of those who want to give up chocolate for 40 days and 40 nights. Those who want to take up exercise. It can literally be anything. Literally anything. I don't know if you're noticing, but I'm fasting from not getting a haircut right now. And it's, it's getting difficult at this stage, I won't, I won't lie to you. I often ask Adrian when we walk into the office, does my hair look okay? In which he goes, absolutely, he loves my hair. More often than not, he's paid to do so. But Lent, it can be anything that we want it to be. And there is a beauty of that. The beauty of Lent is it can be absolutely anything, as long as it is God-centred and it is acknowledgement of the journey of faith as well. We can take even the most ordinary of Lent practices and turn it into something meaningful. How is God moving amongst us? How is he communicating himself to us? And today we're going to be taking a look into Jesus' teachings in Matthew's Gospel. And in the process, take a look at ourselves and how we see Lent. And friends, I want to encourage you that Lent is an act of significant worship to Jesus, significant acknowledgement. And we're going to be looking at just a couple of brief points to help us unpack what we're meant to see. And the first thing Jesus emphasize, emphasizes is fasting. In verses 16 to 18, why do we do it? Why do we fast? I'm sure we've asked ourselves this question. I've certainly asked myself the question, why do I do what I do? Gosh, why am I doing this to myself? And Jesus wants to emphasize to us that we are not doing this as a means of reputation or self gratification to our peers. No, we are doing it, as his word describes, to our loving Father alone. Whatever the practice is, how are we seeing God? How is God moving amongst us? And what is it teaching us? That is the significance of Lent. Now, just to put it into context, Lent, traditionally in the Bible, is an outward sign of inner contrition and conflict. What ails your heart? Am I a bad person? Have I fallen from grace? This was the mentality of those who took up Lent in the biblical era. And I must say, there are peculiar acts of Lent within the Old Testament. It can be abstaining from a certain kind of food, abstaining from certain kinds of clothes, and I've even read in some cases where there'll be some communities that would abstain from clothes altogether. Very, very few, mind you, but <laughs> just imagine that. Abstaining from all items of clothing for 40 days and 40 nights. It is, I don't think it's a very common practice in this day and age, but it was a practice in some sparse communities nonetheless. Some of these were very strange, but they all served the same purpose. No matter the variety, no matter the different variations, it all serve the same purpose of drawing closer to God, enriching their spirit and enriching their faith. All because they were open to the concept of what God might reveal to them. And friends, I asked you at the beginning what your particular practices or understandings of Lent was. And the beauty is it can be absolutely anything. If we but focus and centralise it on what God might reveal and teach us, that is why it's so crucial. We must treat fasting and Lent as a worship to God. Proclaim all that is good in his name and reap the blessings through taking up this act of worship. 
Joel chapter 2 verse 12 says this, This is why the Lord says, Turn to me now while there is time. Give me your hearts. Come with fasting, weeping, and mourning. Come to me with fasting, weeping, and mourning. We must ask ourselves this question. Why we take up that fasting? What are we looking to achieve? We are looking to achieve a closeness to God, an enriching of our faith, an enriching of our spirits. That is what, friends, we are looking to achieve. And it's just a means of focus. Even it's through giving up chocolate or even abstaining from haircuts. If we could focus on this period as an act of worship, then we will most certainly see God. Friends, fasting with no change of heart is valueless. Absolutely valueless. Jesus is making a challenge to all of us in this season of Lent. Is the season that the Lent is fad or what everyone else is doing of what we're taking up? Or is it how we conduct ourselves? Or and I want us to focus on this point particularly, or is this the outward sign of gratification to God, an expression of faith? We do this because we want to grow in the Spirit. We do this because we want to grow in our faith and journey with Christ. We want to grow. We come with our hearts full, Lord God. These are some of the things we need to be asking ourselves. Lent presents a rich opportunity to really devote ourselves through our specific fasts and specific circumstances. A rich opportunity to really see God moving among us. And in these instances, it can be a powerful realisation as long as we fast for the right reasons. And the second of our points Jesus wants to make is our use of wealth. Now, just to clear things up, friends, there is a, often a misunderstanding, a misconception of the dangers of riches. It is not condemning wealth, but it is condemning merely the greed and the hoarding of wealth, whatever wealth may be. It is not condemning wealth itself. Money is understandably the root of both aspiration and of trial. Of course it is. Let's face it, friends, money is right up there with oxygen. Of course we're going to centralise it. But we must be careful not to hoard such things. And we must, must have that sense of seeing it as a gift and a provision of God. Do you ever have those moments where we think, oh my goodness, God has really taken me and carried me through this situation? That is the grace of God. He gives to us, he gives to his children, whether it be through set circumstances, whether it be through monetary support, or for loved ones around us. God looks out for us, and the hoarding of wealth and treasures is a testament of trying to do it without God's intervention. That is what Jesus is teaching. We must be careful not to rely on our own strength, as scripture does remind us all the time. And this is, this is an example of even in my own current circumstances. Over the last few months, I've been visiting a dentist, and there's been noticeable uh, significant extractions being made. And people often ask me, doesn't all of these procedures wear on your heart and soul? Doesn't these things bring you to tears? <laughs> and my honest answer, friends, is the only thing that brings me to tears is the pricing. I have to go private dentist to see being new to the area, and I gotta be honest, no word of the lie, it's the prices that dishearten me the most. My goodness, is it? But it's in those circumstances that I say, you know what, God, I trust you in this, for your grace is sufficient for me. His grace is sufficient for us, friends. His grace is everlasting, and he will provide for our needs. He will. Verses 19 to 20, it's all about God supporting us. God has us, friends. Strive for things of eternal value, not of the world value. Just to put it into context, Jesus does say, don't store up treasures here on earth. 
because during those times, bricks were made of mud. It was easy to break into them. Very, very applicable. But that teaching is still relevant today. Though we don't live in brick houses made of mud, but the importance is still the same. We do not have to put our trust in our wells. We put our trust in Jesus and God who provides such amenities for us. In giving of our time, our offering, and giving of ourselves, we are taking part in worshiping, acknowledging him as Lord and Saviour, and during this season of Lent, allowing him to provide for our needs, saying, God, you are bigger than this, and we want to see you. We want to sense you, and we want to feel you amongst us. And friends, I promise you, whatever the version of our Lent practices are, if we but centralise it on God, growth will happen. Growth will happen. Jesus made no divisions between the spiritual and the material matters, but it's based on the attributes towards them. Greed comes from our hearts. It doesn't come from God. Money isn't deemed a bad thing, merely our attitude towards it. I just want to remind you of a verse in Genesis, Genesis chapter 1, verses 31. And it says this, Then God looked over all he had made, and he saw that it was very good. Everything that he had made was very good. The means of acquiring wealth, which by the way goes beyond money, is made good in his image. If we but have the right attitude to give him thanksgiving for it. It's all about how we can use this and how we channel our devotion. Friends, in this day of pandemic, of restrictions, of lockdown, it isn't wise to give up the amenities that make us happy. But equally, Lent is approaching these amenities with a spirit of thanksgiving. If we would give thanksgiving in all that we do, in all that we have, even very little that we have, we would gain blessing from it. 1 Timothy 6, 17 says this, Teach those who are rich in this world not to be proud and to not trust in their money, which is so unreliable. Their trust should be in God. It should be in God. Friends, it is still meant if we approach the things we have with a thankful heart. And just to wrap up, just I want you to consider the sacrifice of Jesus, why we celebrate and take part in the season of Lent. At the very beginning, we asked the question, what is the definition of Lent? And for so many people, that means so many different things. But here's my understanding of Lent, friends. I see Lent as an act of worship. I am devoting myself and channeling my energies into God, into Jesus, into why we have this relationship. We must ask ourselves three short questions. How are we growing? How are we seeing God? And how do I radiate the joy and the worship this Lent season? Whatever we decide to do for Lent, whatever we are doing for Lent, ensure it is done with a devotional spirit and a thankful heart. For Lent is an act of worship. Traditionally speaking, there is a concept of bowing the knee. Bowing the knee is submitting oneself in honoration, exoneration. And very shortly we're going to be approaching another song and worshiping together and listening to a song Bow the Knee. And friends, I want you to consider what this Lent season means for you, what Jesus, the cross, what all of this means for you. How can we radiate the joy and the worship this Lent season? We bow the knee to our loving Saviour, whose grace is sufficient for us. We're going to be listening to the international style of songsters, and I just encourage you to turn the volume up, absorb worshipfully the words of this song, and seek in your heart what God might be saying, revealing to you this day. 
So friends, however you see Lent, let us see it as an act of worship. Thank you, Adrian.
self acknowledging God and the bringing of ourselves to him. Wonderful song. And I'm just going to close with a benedictory reading taken again from Matthew's Gospel at the end of chapter 6. And I just encourage you to hold these words to heart in all that you do and continue to do. Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously and he will give you everything you need. So don't worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will bring its own worries. Today's trouble is enough for today. Let's pray. Father God, we just want to thank you so much for the wisdom of your son Jesus in teaching us the importance of them and seeing it as an act of significant worship to you. I just pray, Lord God, in whatever practices we take and in all the things that we do, that we may keep you central and we may keep you at the centre of everything that we do. May we see you this season of Lent, Lord God. And as your word says, may we approach your throne with a thankful heart and a devotional spirit. In Jesus' name we pray all these things. Amen. Amen. We want to thank you so much for joining us again, and we look forward to you tuning in next week. But until then, be blessed, be a blessing, and may God bless you richly.